It has been five weeks since I got a haircut, and that is way too long. Way too long. I normally go anywhere from two to three weeks between getting a trim. Sometimes I'll go four. I've been doing a lot of travel. I've been camping. There's just been a lot that's been going on, so... It is time, and I'm going to take you along with me today, and not only that, but I'm going to tell you what kind of questions you should be asking your barber um, as you decide to change your haircut, because I'm not sure yet, but I think I'm going to actually change it up a little bit today uh, to do something a little bit different, and I'll show you what kind of conversation you have should have with a competent barber if you decide that you actually want to switch things up from what you're used to. So, well, let's go do it. What's up? How are you? You doing well. What have you been up to? Um, just reading, getting better, doing things. Yeah, the whole space is gonna change. Cool. So, this is, so all the flooring is coming up. Um, this pony wall is coming down. That pony wall is coming down. That pony wall is coming down. Cool. I know I want to do something different. Okay. Because and I'm not like drastically different, but I know I want to go shorter because the less time I have to take doing it, then the more time I have to do other things. Yeah, sure. And also during the summer, then lighter is going to be better. Yeah. Right? And um, we are just up camping for a week, and I'd wear a hat the whole time because that head looks retarded. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I, yeah. And I just, all that, I'm, I, I still want kind of, I want lower maintenance. Yeah. But I still want it to be something that still works with my aesthetic. Sure. Um, it's just being creative about, um, with things like that, if you you want to change, but you don't really want to commit completely to an entire new look, all I have to do then is just really we just kind of experiment with shorter lengths in different areas. It's mm -hmm. just visual. It's, it's right. visual distribution. That's what I was way. thinking. So I was flipping through some stuff this morning. What you got? Um, always make sure that you bring examples, right? Yeah, yeah. Examples are good. Examples examples tell me the kind of hair that you want to strive for. I can't. Um, you can't ever. I can never give you completely what you show, what you see on Pinterest. Your, right. your material, your building material is different. That kind of thing. Yes. You know. And, and that's another good question to ask: is once you show a picture, does this work for my hair type? Does this work for my my head shape? Does and that's this and that's my job. My job is to look at that photo and go, yeah, we could do that mm -hmm. on you. Your bone structure, your style, everything about you says, yeah, well, we can make this that kind of thing. As a barber, it, at least the way I view it, my job shouldn't be to just give you a cut just because that's what you want, I really should be able to kind of tell you no. Or... <laughs> yes. Or like, hey, Which is why you find and pay for a good barber. Maybe mm -hmm. maybe not this, but let's try something like that. Oh, right. I see what you're getting at. Let's go for it. Yes. Kind of yes. Okay. Yeah. Super simple. That's fine. Right? But it's still kind of... There's the same level of discipline because it's not just a buzz cut, but it's shorter and then it requires less maintenance. So, okay, the difference between him and yours is he has natural texture. He's got a little tiny bit of curl. Uh -huh. You lack a little bit of curl. Right. And you're also brushing your hair back. Uh -huh. He's brushing his hair forward. That's a Caesar. Right. I can almost guarantee that's a Caesar. That means so that's it's from the crown forward, uh -huh. not from the, uh, the, the, whatever the plate is. I forget that is. Anyway, the, the front tail is muscle. The front tail is bone right here, that kind of thing. Oh, no, that's the muscle, sorry. The front house muscle backwards. Right. So you're you're pulling your hair backward. He's pushing his hair forward. So it would require you changing up everything. Um, if you want, all I have to really do to kind of see if you can quote do that mm -hmm. is I just have to weigh your hair down and we have to push your hair forward. If your hair will cover in the crown and things and stuff like that, then is it's there fine. a way to make that look that? Because <coughs> it's almost like it's a military cut, which I don't want. I mean, I'm not in the military. You know, it's not like a stolen valor, but at the same time, I don't want to be no. communicating something that I'm not. Well, well it doesn't. But, no, at this day and age, it's not. At, at this day and age, you could wear a crew cut, you could wear a bus cut, you could wear a thing, because they've they, they've moved past the military. Okay. They've been so long colloquially just in in, in, in men's styles. Uh -huh. you, it doesn't matter okay. anymore. Because I mean, if you were wor at all worried about, you know. The whole in Valor per se. <laughs> that's all that's obviously to the extreme. All but, I'd yeah. have to do, I mean, if we lined it up or something, or we added like a line, a, 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 you know, a design or something, mm -hmm. it would immediately quell any suspicions that you right. were stealing. But the problem, I think, if we go too too far the other way, because I still have employees that I have to like, I still have to look like an executive yeah, instead of being too rakish. So I still. I want it to be refined, but I want it to be a little bit sharper, still the discipline that we've talked about before, mm -hmm. but shorter and easier. I always like to think that 
Um, life is kind of that way. There's certain masks that everybody portrays, and no matter who puts it on, we all recognize it. So there's like right. the businessman mask. Right. Like uh, Marilyn Monroe invented one when she created the, the ditzy yeah. blonde. Like flawlessly, she created a new mask, a new trope in society that we all kind of like, yeah, we all get that. Yeah, that. you create that. You create that with your clothing, you create it with your hair, and, well, it's, and so you're wanting to play it's to the, that. one of those things like you can play with. You can play with it. It's so ingrained as part of society that you can just, um, you can try on different masks and they can, right. they can evoke certain different things. So we can, we can Let's work try. in a lot of different okay. ways. And that's, yeah, yeah it's just, it's good. Okay. There's lots of different cool. things. Lot, there's lots of ways that you can take something and, and make it your own. So, okay, cool. We'll, we'll, we'll see how this again. works. So here we are a couple days later. What do you think? I like it. I think John did a great job. That's why I've been seeing him for two years now because he always does a great job. As you will see, this is not exactly the same as the photo that I showed you. And that's because there are some limitations. And that is why you have a good conversation with a good barber because it helps you accomplish your desired goal. Even if it's not just a matter of, here's this picture, make me look just like this because that doesn't always work all the time. So the four main things that you wanna be able to do when you have a conversation with your barber. First, talk to him about how much work you're willing to put into this, how often you're willing to come back and get it trimmed, what kind of daily routine you're willing to put into, how much time or money you're willing to invest in things like product or blow drying or all that, because that definitely dictates what you can and cannot do. Number two, does this actually tell the story that you want to tell? You heard us talking about having to be an executive, but not wanting to look like I think I'm in the military and all those other things. That stuff can sound kind of finicky, but just like your clothing, people interpret a story based on the clothing that you're wearing and your haircut. And are you telling the story that you want them to hear or that you want them to interpret? And so you have to make sure that that's an active conversation so that you get it dialed in the way that you want it to. The third thing you want to talk about with your barber is whether or not you have physical limitations that will prevent you from being able to replicate what it is that you're showing him. Um, what's your face shape like? What's your skull structure like? What's the texture and the consistency and the thickness of your hair? If you're balding, you're probably not gonna to wanna to try and do a mohawk. It's gonna look ridiculous. Pay attention to that. And then the fourth one that you wanna talk about with your barber is whether or not he is on board with what it is that you've landed on. You definitely don't want a barber to be a yes man and that's the problem with going to really cheap places and those chain places is they don't care they don't really need to establish a relationship with you they've just got to burn through as however many people come into the chair and so you show them a picture they're gonna do it and replicate it they're gonna get you in and out as quickly as possible irrespective of how poor it looks at the same time you don't want to work with the barber who's one of those guys who says well I'm an artist and I'm only going to create what I think is best for you you want somebody who is going to work with you to help you accomplish your aesthetic goals with your hair so hope you like this hope it helps give me a thumbs up I'll see you guys next time